How do you are, friends? Welcome to Props and Wheels and to the second episode of the review for the Cessna 182 Plus 1200mm kit from Banggood. This is a no-name kit, nothing inside outside and there were not many instructions that I could find online either. There is one video, but that's in Chinese, a little over one hour, that I was able to find by just following the QR code provided on these one-page Chinese instructions. So if you follow these, it will take you to a website or something similar to YouTube called Yuku, Yuku, I don't know how to pronounce it. And then there is uh, this uh, Chinese gentleman uh, showing the putting together of this kit. Again, uh, it is in Chinese and I don't, I don't know Chinese. So if you do, probably this will be useful, but I wanted to have a detailed assembly video of this kit because I haven't found anything online that's not in English. So I'm going to get to it, but before I do that, in, as you know, in the previous episode, I have shown the, all the components, all the parts that I'm planning to use. And here are my tools that I'm planning to use. Of course, my hot glue gun, Gorilla brand, and I'm, you, I'll be using it in the low temperature setting so I don't melt the foam. And for the first time, I'm going to use this foam tag adhesive. It was highly recommended by my friends at the Aero Junkies RC group, local RC group. And of course, I'm going to do some soldering. So my soldering stuff is here as well, as well as my shrink tubing. Uh, for these parts with the ESC and also the lease for the motor and all that. So I think I have everything here that I need. I'm going to start the assembly by just explaining what I'll be doing. And then I'm going to put it in time lapse. I don't want you to watch me doing this for an hour, an hour and a half. And probably I won't be able to do it as quickly as that Chinese gentleman who has been putting it together because he seemed to be professional. This is going to be the first time I'm putting this together. So every time I have something to comment on, I can come back to the real time and give the comments and tell you what I'll be doing. And then I'll go back to time lapse. It looks like the first step is putting the two halves of the fuselage together. Let me pull the nose cone, this comes out. And as you see, just two parts. And they, they mesh very well together. I'm not going to use hot glue on this one because there's a lot of area that I hot glue when you are coming to the last section that you're hot gluing, the, the first section may have already hardened. So I'm going to use the foam tack for the first time on this. But before you do that, let me give you a warning. There are two plastic tubes that will be guiding these control wires to the back, the rods to the back, to the vertical and horizontal stabilizers. So those need to be in here. There are holes for that and then you need to figure out how to guide them and how long you have to keep them. So you can probably see here, there's one of them coming out this way. There's another one coming out this way and yet there's another one coming this way. And the reason is the horizontal stabilizer is actually have two holes for the horns, control horns. And probably in some versions, there may be two separate wires coming out for each, maybe two servos, I'm not sure. But on this one, I know that these will be actually connected together on this side by this thick metal wire. So it will hold them together. So only one needs to be have the horn attached to it. So when this moves, this will move together if you do it correctly. So I need to figure out first which of these holes on the right and left and top are going to have these and then these need to be guided from inside. So these ends, as you see, have the Z-bands. These Z-bands will be going into the uh, servo control arms. So these should not be outside, these should be inside. The other ends, which don't have, let me pull one out so you can see. Here's the long one. So the other ends are going to go to the control horns on the control surfaces, but for that, there's some hardware to install them. These, uh, I, I haven't taken them out, but this is probably what we'll be using for that purpose. So we have to make sure that these wires are guided correctly and the, the one, I'm not even sure they are the same length, but you have to use the one with the correct length. So one is uh, slightly longer as you can see, and the other one, because once you put these together, it will be difficult to take these off from inside. I mean, you can bend it probably, 
or the pull it from the nose opening. But once you start putting everything together, it's going to be very difficult. So I'm going to go to time lapse now and then try to figure that out and let you know. So I think I figured out the rudder and elevator control rods. So I tentatively put in, without of course fastening, two servos where the tray is going to be. There's going to be a wooden tray, but these are the locations where they are going to be. And if that's the correct way of doing this, then this is the control rod coming out. Of course, this end is going to be on the other side, but I'm just trying it and testing it right right now. So this will be coming to the rudder with the control horn on the left hand side. And if you look below, the one for the elevator coming again from the right hand side as well, and then attaching to this one over here, control horn. And these will be the two parts, two section right and left sections of the horizontal stabilizer will be connecting by this connecting rod. So if that's true, then the tips of these plastics need to be about here, so they are not in the way. So what I'm going to do next is just take everything off. Now, now that I know where they need to be guided, just going to put the two halves together with the foam tack and also glue these uh, plastic tubing that are the guides for the control rods. I just would like to show you the proper lens of these two guide tubing. So the, the one on top you see here is the one that goes to, to the rudder, this one. And I just need to make sure that it is glued in this area and then reaching here. So the tray, servo tray is going to be here. So it's just going to end uh, short of the servo tray, both of them. And I'm going to just put like a little dabs of hot glue to do that because it's easier than just waiting for the foam tack to cure. And then same way, this kind of goes, this one that goes to the horizontal stabilizer, it kind of crosses from this right half of the fuselage to the, to the left one here. So it needs to be glued here. But I can also leave it for later. I should be able to reach in and then glue it as needed. And then it's more important that the, the anchor sides are glued on the back. So I'm just going to do that this part using hot glue because it's much quicker. So the plastic tubing have been glued in place on the right hand side of the fuselage. I don't think I'm going to do anything now with the left hand. So what I'm going to do next is put the wires in so that the Z bands are on this side, on the servo side. So I'm just going to guide these out. And then I'm going to just use foam tack to glue the two fuselage halves together. Now that the two halves of the fuselage are glued together, it is time to install the plywood reinforcements or the attachment points of the main landing gear here on the bottom, the wing, and also the tray for the servo, the servo tray. Let me show you which one those are. So there are a lot of these pieces, plywood pieces, and you need to make sure that you are doing the right order some of them are at the same size. 
So this is the servo tray. So we'll go in here. This is the reinforcement for the main landing gear attachment on the bottom. We'll come over here. And on the other side will be this reinforcement. These will be glued together. And as you can see, the one that's going to stay top have two of these holes for the nuts. So it will go like this after being glued. It will be glued that way. And these two nuts will hold the landing gear together so they will go from bottom. And then this will be the reinforcement for the wing. In the same way, the nuts will be on the other side, like this way. This time it will, they will be facing down. These will be glued together and they will go underneath this section. So the wing will come from the top. So this needs to go in like this. And finally, after these, the servo tray will be installed and make sure that this thicker section faces uh, towards the front of the fuselage and then thinner section faces toward the back. But there's a really a way of this getting in. Don't, don't put it in wrong. So it will go, go in like this inside. Just a quick comment. When you are putting these two pieces together, make sure that if you, especially if you are using hot glue, make sure that to clean off the, the glue from this hole because one of these little nuts are going to get, go into these holes. So, and uh, yeah, you have to be able to put them in flush. And the second thing is make sure that these two pieces are aligned. When you are pressing hot glue between them, you don't have too much time. Within a couple seconds, it will harden and you won't be able to separate them. And if they are crooked, they are going to stay that way. Here we go, these reinforcements are done for the main landing gear, for the wing, as well as the servo tray. Uh, for the servo tray, I also did a little bit of uh, extra hot glue in the front as, as far as I can reach in. So everything seems to be nice and tight. And next, I'm going to do the reinforcements for the nose cone. When you are installing these reinforcements, make sure that the ones with kind of like two rounded corners and a larger hole are on the nose cone, and the ones with a smaller hole and uh, kind of like squarish or rectangular with sharp corners go to the inside. Next step is to install the reinforcements, again made from plywood, for the front landing gear. So there are two pieces. This larger piece that looks like a short T goes in the front like this. And this more straight piece goes over here. And then you can see that there's a slot that goes from the bottom to the top. And then this will be over here like this. And the other piece on the bottom like that. The reinforcements for the front landing gear are done. As you can see, it's going to go like this. And at the top, it's going to be connected to the rudder servo so it can rotate. All right. The next step is to install the motor mount and the motor. The motor mount for this model is plastic and it doesn't have any reinforcement, but it is hard plastic, so it shouldn't have a problem to have enough strength. And the motor, the race star motor that I'm using for this one, it's not going to require this metal mount. So the motor is going to go to this cradle section 
which is going to be the front. It's a wider half circle, not the other side. So the wires are going to come through this hole in the bottom opening. And then this is going to, this is like an outrunner. So it's going to be created like this, not touching anything. And as you can see from the back side, the holes line up. The holes on the motor line up with the holes this mount. And then after that, this assembly is going to be glued over here in the front with hot glue. So this is how the motor mount will be installed to the nose of the plane. But before I do that, I'm going to put on the bullet connectors. So I don't have to do it when the motor is already on the plane. Before installing the motor and the electronic components, I'm going to connect everything together and bind it to my RadioMaster TX16S and then make sure that all components are working fine and also the servos are centered. So here is the whole setup, connected to the battery, bound to my TX16S transmitter. And everything is working well. So I have these are the aileron servos. It's working. This is the elevator servo. That's working. The rudder servo. And finally, the motor. I'll include the links to the videos of how to set up a model and bind it to this uh, receiver in the down in the description section. Now it's time to start installing everything. The motor is installed and well centered. Everything looks good and straight, as you can see here. And uh, I, I use plenty of hot glue and reinforced the sides with uh, plenty of hot glue. I just don't want the motor mount to separate during flight, so it feels solid now. And next, I'm going to install the elevator and rudder servos and also the tail feathers. The elevator and rudder servos have been installed and centered. Now it is time to take care of the tail feathers. First, the horizontal stabilizer needs to be installed. 
But before I can do that, I need to install this spar as well as this connector that, that's going to connect the two elevator halves together. And before I even install these, I'm going to use ethanol to clean these since they may have some oil, on, oil residue on them and I don't want that oil to get between the glue and these parts. For the installation, the horizontal vertical stabilizer, I'm going to set the setting of this uh, gun to high. Now, it is going to increase the temperature of the glue and there's a chance of uh, melting the foam a little bit, but I just want to give myself enough time to glue all the surface. This is a big surface over here, especially for the vertical stabilizer. And I just want to make sure that I give myself enough time to align and glue it in. So I will test the temperature on a small section and see if it affects the, the foam, melts it anyway. The chunks of foam we started with are now looking more like an airplane. This is great. The next step would be installing the control horns and then tying in the control rods. But before I do that, what I would like to do is put the two wing halves together. So in the video, the Chinese video with the gentleman demonstrating, the wing looks like a one piece. Maybe they have already glued it, but it is not trivial because there are no guiding holes to put them together. It is just the flat surfaces at the middle. So you have to do a very good job of aligning these when you're doing that. And I don't think the hot glue would be a good option to do this. And for this part, I'm going to use the foam tack because this will give me more time to just uh, put them together. And then I'm going to hold it for five, 10 minutes. I want to show you that, that part of the video. And then after that's done, next step would be to put in the wing spar. And again, that video the, in Chinese is showing putting in the servos and then guiding the servo wires through this channel underneath the larger channel for this uh, wing spar. The problem with that is if you ever stripped and replay, need to replace the servo, it will be almost impossible to do that without destroying the, the wing. Because once you put the servo wire underneath in the thin channel that you see here, it is going to be covered by the wing spar and if you glue it in, you should be gluing this in really tightly, you won't be able to take this off. So what I'm planning to do is, I'm going to guide the wires above that wing spar and maybe tape them down so it's, it looks more or less flat. So if something happens, I will be able to replace the servos easily without destroying the wing. I'm waiting for the foam tack to cure, but what I did was, it was very difficult to keep the wings aligned because they were kind of sliding off while I was trying to hold them together. So what I did was, I pressed the wing spar into that channel and it is nice and tight. It is not glued right now, but it is holding the two wing halves aligned properly. I'm just helping by squeezing the, the front part, keep making sure the top and bottom surfaces are level and aligned with each other as well as on the back while I'm holding this. So I'm going to keep holding this another 10-15 minutes until the glue is fully cured. The foam tack is almost fully cured, but it is still a little slippery, especially in this thin section on the back, the trailing edge, midpoint. So what I'm going to do is, in order to keep the two sides, two halves aligned, I'm going to go ahead and install this uh, reinforcement, plywood reinforcement here, so it will keep the back section level. And I'm going to use hot glue for that. Now it's time to glue the wing strap in place. And I'm going to do that using hot glue. So this has been just keeping everything aligned. 
Now that the foam tech has cured, it's time to glue in this one. I'm going to first clean it up because it got a little bit of uh, glue while it was waiting in there. So I'm just going to clean it up with a little bit of ethanol and then put it in. I just installed the control horn for the rudder. The control horns are this uh, two-piece type. Basically, you press this in all the way and then there are some striation that they keep this piece together. But I don't want to rely on that. I'm also putting a little bit of uh, hot glue to the inside of these surfaces when I'm putting them together so they don't kind of come, come off. So this one is going to be for the elevator. It needs to go from the bottom part. The rudder and elevator controls are set. The only thing left for the rudder is connecting the front landing gear to this uh, control rod later so that there is a steering. Now I'm going to switch to the wing and install the aileron servos. In order to install the aileron servos, you also will need to install extension wires, servo extensions, because these are not long enough, definitely not. And I haven't installed them yet, I'm just uh, test fitting. And I'm planning to maybe melt this area, this section, with the hot glue gun, the tip of the hot glue gun, and then press this servo wire into that channel, so I can make enough space. So that, uh, this connectors will be in this area which is which should be inside the fuselage hopefully or maybe I can just even fit it inside this section if I can stretch it enough so that they will go here and that way they will be nicely tucked in another thing I would like to point out is the ailerons have are connected to the surrounding foam so you have to just cut that section out that's a compressed foam that's not fully released on this one it is so you can see it's moving and make sure that you work this out a little bit so the, that foam hinge gets a little soft so it doesn't apply too much stress on the servos when they are starting to work. So if there are any, any burrs, make sure to cut those off so they are not kind of rubbing like here.
Before I permanently glue the aileron servos, I connected them to the receiver and transmitter and then centered them. And I'm just test fitting now. And while I am connecting them to the control clevises, I'm going to keep it down to the transmitter. This way I'll be able to center everything properly and tighten all the screws and don't have to deal later with just uh, setting them correctly. I tucked in the servo extension connectors as well as the servo wires very nicely along the wing spar as much as I can. This was a little short so this last section is a little angled but that's okay. I kind of pressed it in and it is almost flush so it should not create too much drag or turbulence. So it looks good. It's much better than having this underneath the wing spar because if it were like that, if I had any issues with the servos, I wouldn't be able to replace them easily. So this way I can just, this is just hot glue, I can just melt it and then peel it all back and then replace the servo if needed. And this will be going in at the center, so everything looks good. And next I'm going to start attaching the main and front landing gear. So for the front landing gear I'm going to connect it to the control rod coming from the rudder servo, this one. In order to install the front landing gear you're going to need two colors. For the bottom part there's going to be this color a set screw as you can see here and for the top it's going to be actually the, the control arm that's going to connect to the control rod coming from the rudder servo and there's also a set screw here so this one goes in and out easily this is a larger diameter in the middle and this is not going in the reason is there's some burr from the cutting of this wire if you can see it here try to focus on it as you can see there's some burr. So what I need to do is I file this first before I can install everything. Before I started tightening everything, I wanted to show you the setup here. So, here is the control rod coming from the rudder servo. So, I use this uh, long arm, both sides. This one goes to the rudder on the back, and this one goes to the front landing gear, the sticker wire. And here is the landing gear, and that's the little collar on the bottom, and then larger collar with this control arm on top and I have not tightened these yet and then uh, this is the same way that the control rods are installed to the all the other control surfaces and I haven't tightened this screw as well as this set screw so I'm just going to do it right after I center everything again I'm going to connect to the transmitter and center everything and then tighten it up and then start installing the wheels and the main landing gear.
It is all good. Everything is working nicely. You can see the rudder turning right rudder and this front wheel turns towards right. So this is nice and tight on top. The only thing I have to do to finish it up is tighten this little collar on the bottom. Just push it up a little bit, but not too tight. So there is still room for turning around. It is shaping up pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is install the nose cone here and then install the propeller and just check everything. And after that, the last item would be to attach the aileron servos and then attach the wing. And after that, I can just do like final checks. If everything is working, I'm going to start putting on the decals and then we will hopefully have a nice day for the maiden flight. Well, that was the last piece that I installed, which is the latch for the battery hatch. So as you can see, it's really nice and tight. And it is very simple, but works well. And my 3S2200 battery fit very well inside. It's tight. I don't even have to put any Velcro. It's really tight in here. And then this just closes like this. And then you close it shut and it's all good. So everything seems to be working. Let me put it on the ground and then just uh, test it out quickly. Seems to be working well. Right treader. Throttle. Up elevator, down elevator. Okay, so I just have to reverse the ailerons. So I just reverse the ailerons. Right bank, left bank. Seems to be working well. Now it's time for my least favorite part. Putting on the decals. I always screw this up. But before I start, what I'm going to do is Wipe down all the surfaces that I'm going to get the decals with alcohol and a paper towel so that there's no re residue that will inhibit the glue of the decal from sticking to the surface and peel off. All right, let's speed this up and get it over with.
By the way, if you are wondering about this stand, model stand, it's from FMS. It's called a FMS model stand, as you can see here. And this is a Valentine's Day present from my lovely wife, Ekin, over here. Thank you so much, baby. It's such a great present. I really appreciate it. This is great. Yeah, this made my life so much easier. So decals, putting on decals was a nightmare for me before because I was just using uh, either the floor or the top of the table. It didn't work well. I just kept scraping the, the wingtips and the top of the vertical stabilizer all the time. This, this makes it so easy, people, really. I don't know why I didn't have one all these years. So now I have it, I cannot live without it. I mean, look, you can just rotate it while you're doing it. It made it so easy and then everything looks great because of the stand, I was able to put everything straight. There are only a couple little ones left and I'm just going to finish that, that up. Now, I think these two, <laughs> they go, I believe, uh, somewhere on the wingtips. And I'm going to finish that up and it will be ready for its maiden flight. All right, friends, the Cessna 182 Plus from Banggood with 1200 millimeter wingspan is all done and ready to be maiden. I cannot give a final verdict, but so far I'm really impressed with this inexpensive kit. Especially if you think that it can get this something like that on sale for $50. And for $100, you get something that you can bind to your transmitter and fly, including the LiPo battery. This is quite good. Nothing was missing. I, I, actually, I, I found out that there was like an extra clevis and hardware in case well, like one broke. So nothing was missing. The quality of the foam, this is EPO foam, is fantastic. It's very smooth surface. It feels solid. It doesn't feel heavy, but solid, nicely solid. And the fit and finish has been great. Like I cannot even see the seam. It's really nice. The decal sheet, the decals are something that I really hate because they ripped, they didn't come off easily. This was like a breeze. It was so easy. Of course, the, the stand helped as well. My Valentine's gift from my wife, the FMS model stand. This is the first time I'm using it. It really helped. So you need something like that if you build and put on a special decals. This is also great for testing the control surfaces. Everything is, came together very nicely. I didn't have any issues. At least nothing related to the model itself. It came in a small package. Yes, uh, the building time was a little, a little long. I took my time. I usually don't build too quickly. Probably can get faster than I do. But overall, I'm really happy. If it flies like this, this is going to be on my top list. So I'm hoping it's going to be a good maiden. There are not many videos. I only have seen like a few videos flying this or something that looks similar, but not exact. So I'm really looking forward. It may be too late today, but uh, tomorrow, hopefully, if the weather is good and there is uh, not much snow on the ground, so I can actually take up and land, this will be good. Because these tires, like foam tires, are really tiny. So you are going to need a smooth surface, such as asphalt or concrete, maybe a large parking lot, free of people and cars without too many light poles will be great. One of those uh, abandoned parking lots or maybe a store that's closed over the weekend, that will be great. I would not really call this a park flyer because it is uh, probably all too heavy and I'm assuming it's also going to be quite fast for a park flyer. Which is not, not that bad at all. But again, considering the, the motor and the prop size, you know, it can do damage. So I wouldn't fly it in a park unless like, there's no one around. And also, you know, taking off and landing over grass, unless it's really the short grass, almost like down to the soil, it's, it's going to be tricky. You may end up uh, breaking or bending the landing gear. But so far, I'm really happy. And I hope you enjoyed this uh, detailed build video because there was only one that was in Chinese. And of course, I, I watched that first to figure out, but I changed a couple things, like the order, like where you're going to put those uh, servo wires, because I don't, I don't agree that servo wires should be underneath that wing spar now. Anyway, if you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please do so because we constantly add these kind of build videos, flight, flight videos, even funny videos that where we fall, usually fall on our faces and like crash, like whatever we are reviewing, we say good and bad things. So these, we are not sponsored. Well, we just passed over a thousand, but we don't have any sponsors. So whatever you see on our channel is purchased with our own money or maybe given to us by a friend, which reminds me, the receiver on this model was donated to me by a friend who was switching to another brand and he had like a bag of eight of these receivers. So thank you Scott, aka also known as Maverick, for this. 
I mean, the components on this one are like on the cheapest of the cheap, like really cheap servos, but you don't really need anything too expensive for this kind of model. For about $100, you can bring it, build it to a bind and fly condition. Thank you very much for watching. Please stay tuned for the maiden flight that's coming very soon. And also stay tuned for our announcement of the 1000 subscriber giveaway. Stay safe and healthy. Hope to see you on the next video. Bye-bye.